Thank you for listening to the Die Hard Dan podcast presented by Detroit Lions on the Prowl on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. Some said we would go belly up, so we made it our name, and we're still here. The Stafford era is done in Detroit. Coming up on this edition of the Die Hard Dan podcast presented by Detroit Lions on the Prowl, Shawnee J and I discuss five teams that may be a good trade partner for the Lions. Then we look at the new additions to the coaching staff. All this and more coming up right now on this edition of the Die Hard Dan podcast presented by Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Watch out. Here comes that roar. This is Skirt Steel, and welcome to the Die Hard Jam Podcast. And as always, I'm with my man, Shawnee Jake. What's up, good people? Glad to be back. All right, my man. It's good to have you back. So, you know who we are. We are the Die Hard Jam Podcast, presented by Detroit Lions on the Prowl. So, thank you for checking us out. You know it's uh, it's good to be here on the Die Hard Damn Podcast. We are now on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, like the video, share the video, um, comment on the video, all of these things we need you to do. And go over to bellyupsports.com and check out the content over there. you got a myriad of podcasts. All of your sports needs is right over there. For the Die Hard Damn, go over there and check out our Facebook page. My man, Shawnee J., does an excellent job of keeping you informed of what's going on with the Detroit Lions over there on our Facebook page. And if you're listening on one of the uh, podcast platforms, thank you for the download. We really appreciate it. Now, it is time to tell me something good. And the good thing this week, we got one thing. The hardest working man in Michigan is back on the program after a week he had to work. And Sean, welcome back, man. We really appreciate you being back on the program for the people. Thank you so much, Curtis. It feels good to be back. You know, we've done this for two years now. I really enjoy doing the Die Hard Den. As you know, I work very high outside the show. Mm-hmm. I always find time to do this this podcast. Yes, he does. Hey, give it up. Big up to my man, Shawnee J. He does his thing over there working seven days a week. He is like the James Brown of podcasters, always doing his thing seven days a week. All right, now it's time to go on the ball. We're going to talk about the five teams, the possible suitors for the Matthew Stafford trade. If you haven't heard, you must be under a rock. Matthew Stafford went to the Lions brass and said he wanted to be traded. The staff agreed. They say, hey, you know, it's time to move on. Matthew Stafford has been with the team for 12 years and doesn't want to go through another rebuild. So he went to the team and said, please trade me. Now, a lot of Lions fans are happy, but some are not so happy. And that's sent a shockwave through the Lions fan base, Johnny J. Yes, it has. You know, Stafford's been the best quarterback in Lions history. He has all the passing records. The only thing mm-hmm. he's missing is the championship rings, but that's not on him. The Lions failed to build sufficient defense to get a man a running game. To get to the Super Bowl, I mean, I'll look at all the great quarterbacks who won rings. What did they have in common? They were good quarterbacks, yes. Mm-hmm. But they also had a defense and a running game to go with them. Like Terry Bradshaw had Franco in the steel curtain. Mm-hmm. And look at Brady. He had a strong game, running game with Tampa and New England yeah. and defense. So people think that Stafford can put the team on his back and carry themselves are delusional. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So let's take a look at uh, the five best suitors for Matthew Stafford right now, what the trade rumors are. Okay, let's look at it. We have Washington football team. All right, they can offer the Lions uh, the number 19 overall, excuse me, yeah, the number 19 overall pick in the 2021 draft, uh, along with the 2021 third round pick and a 2022 second round pick. The Indianapolis coach can offer the Lions the, um, their 2021 first round pick, their 21st overall, a 2021 third round pick, and a 2022 first round pick in exchange for Stafford. 
and a 2022 second round pick. The Patriots are another team that come into mind. Uh, they can offer two first round draft picks for Stafford, uh, 15 overall in 2021 and the 2022 first round pick. The 49ers, hey, that, that seems to be a really hot team right now as far as heating up with, tra with trade talks. They can offer the 12th overall pick in this year's draft along with a second rounder and they will send uh, their third round and fourth round pick for next year's draft in exchange for Matthew Stafford. And the last team that we could talk about, the Panthers can offer the number eight overall pick in this year's draft and a 2021 third round pick and a 2022 third round pick. Now that's a big haul to get for my man, Matthew Stafford uh, right here in Detroit. So what do you think about those five teams? Who do you think is the, is the best team uh, offer on the table for Matthew Stafford. Who do you think will get him for those draft picks? Listen to what you just said, mm -hmm. what they, they had to um, offer. Mm -hmm. To me, it sounds like it's between the Panthers, the 49ers, and the Colts. Uh -huh. They seem to be offering the most. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm greedy. Like I said, I want to get as much as I can for Stafford squeezes, mm -hmm. lemon for all, his, all the juice it has, mm -hmm. and um, – you know, I was. You may have you even seen him watching my posts inside the the group. Yeah, I have. I mm -hmm. the to get a Herschel Walker deal for Stafford. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, like I said, I definitely don't want no like you know, just give them away like the Tigers gave away their best player, mm -hmm. Justin Verlander, and the Pistons gave away Andre Drummond for nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we can squeeze them for a little bit more. How how bad they want, you know? Yeah, the stuff offers from their perspective. Mm -hmm. But from my perspective, maybe I'm a little greedy, but you try to squeeze them for as much as you can. Yeah. Maybe you never pick this season. Mm -hmm. And let's see how let's see how badly they want them. You know. Yeah. May the highest bidder win. But definitely I said this too. Don't trade him to no division rival, but the Bears, the Vikings, and nah. the Packers can win it. Nah. And um the Colts, you won't see the Colts for a few years. Mm -hmm. We see the forty nines occasionally and the Panthers. Yeah. Um so the Colts might be the best. You don't want to see him. We don't come back to haunt you anytime yeah. soon. Mm -hmm. So the the Colts offer a little bit more out here mm -hmm. than the Colts. I, I'm liking the Colts as well. They're they're looking like they have a lot to offer. Now the 49ers, if the Lions trade Matthew Stafford to the 49ers, Matthew Stafford will be back in Detroit this season to right. play the Lions. So you know that be maybe one thing they may want to avoid. You know that's one thing you may want to be like uh. Yeah, not so much, but you know, <laughs> but, we'll, yeah, I mean, exactly. we'll see. Um, but it's also good, you know, that the fact that the Lions can get a, you know, we can get a King's ransom for him. It, and I think it's going to be easier to move on from Matthew Stafford than the Texans moving on from Deshaun Watson. You got to remember Deshaun Watson just signed his deal. So he has a lot of money and a lot of cap space is going to be uh, taken up on the next team he goes to where Matthew Stafford is going to have a, you know, it's, Gonna have a, a easier bit with the with the uh the saving. So they'll basically be playing, you know, a, it's gonna be a team friendly deal wherever he goes, because the Lions are gonna save some money on their end, and the new teams are gonna save some money on their end uh by getting Matthew Stafford. Uh it's just a sad time for the era to end um and looking at some things that are going on in Detroit. Uh it's a it's a roller coaster of emotions right now. For Lions fans, just because of the fact that you you have your your franchise quarterback wants to leave, and you have some other good things that's happening in the front office and in the coaching staff. So let's get into that. So let's talk about some new uh, staff members on the Lions. But before we get that, uh, again, thank you for watching the Die Hard Dan or tuning into the Die Hard Dan podcast presented by Detroit Lions on the Prowl. On the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network, uh, we really appreciate it. If you're watching the videos on Facebook or YouTube, like the videos, share the videos, leave us a comment, tell us how we're doing. Join our Facebook page. Shawnee J does an ama amazing job over there, keeping you informed of all the Detroit Lions news and rumors over there on our Facebook page. He just does his thing. And if you listen to us on one of the podcast networks, Thank you for the download. We really appreciate your business. Now, let's get into the Defender Den. Let's talk about some new uh, front office hires. So let's kind of get into that.
You got Ray Agnew coming in as the assistant GM, and then you have John Dorsey, who is a senior personnel executive. Now, let's talk about them right quick before we get into some of the coaches. Shawnee J, what do you think about Ray Agnew coming over from the Rams? Um, he was their director of pro personnel over there. So you kind of look at, you had a director of college scouting is our GM for the Rams. And then you bring in the director of pro personnel from the Rams to come over to be our assistant GM. What do you think about the Ray Agnew hire? I yes, I don't know much. I didn't know much about Agnew, mm-hmm. but from what I read, he was a highly respected um, executive, like you said, mm-hmm. former player. Um, he helped build the Rams. Him and, him and um, Holmes helped build the Rams to contenders. They made it to the Super Bowl a few mm-hmm. years ago. Um, yeah, they, like I said, the Lions are putting up together an all-star front office and coaching staff mm-hmm. to get to a minute together. Yeah. My question is, um, will there be too many chefs in the kitchen or too many eagles? I yeah. mean, I hope not. I mean, they are putting an all-star team together like I've never seen the Lions before. Mm-hmm. Know about Barry and Chris Billum. They were hired too, so yeah. well, they still have a role within the organization. So, And also, Disner, and he has so many guys. I mean, yeah. Who's going to be in charge? That's my question. Yeah. My, Mike Disner has definitely has an expanded role in the team. But another person we just really just t- t- touched on is John Dorsey. John Dorsey really rebuilt a couple of teams in the playoffs this year. Looking at the Cleveland Browns, he really helped rebuild that team. And he was one of the catalysts of, re- of building the Chiefs team into what they are. You know, he helped, you know, he was in that front office when they, uh, Drafted a lot of those guys, Kelsey and Mahomes, before going over to the the Browns to help rebuild that roster. So uh, uh, hopefully he can bring some of that magic to Detroit and help rebuild the roster as well. Uh, they have talked about a definitely having a collaborative effort. And one of the things that definitely has come out of Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell's mouth is that it's not about egos. It's always about the team. They're team first individuals. Now let's kind of look at some of the coaching staff. Now I'm now this is the, what I'm really getting excited about right here. If you look at some of the names we have, the defensive coordinator we have Aaron Glenn, offensive coordinator Anthony Lynn, Dave Fipp comes in to take over the special teams. I'll be pleasant, my man. Hey, he's a Flintstone like myself. He came in to take over the defensive backs and the passing game coordinator, and you have um. Uh, Deuce Staley, who has not been officially hired yet, but he has agreed to terms to become the running backs coach. And then you have Mark DeLeon, who's coming over from the Chicago Bears. He's agreed to be the next Lions linebacker coach. So looking at those guys, who excites you the most about those new hires for the on the coaching staff for Dan Campbell? Well, they all do, really, but... Uh... The top three, I got to go with Anthony Lamb, mm-hmm. the former head coach of the Chargers. He's going to be an OC. See if we get the offense going. Um, the defense coordinator, Aaron Glenn, mm-hmm. former player. I remember him well. Yes. Played back in the 90s and 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see if we get our defense, which was porous, which was, you know, like people ran through the – our defense like they ran through the Red Sea, you mm-hmm. know, part of the Red Sea. So let's see if we can um, do something. Also, I like Deuce. Mm-hmm. You know, if you see my post, remember Deuce was a stud running back back in the day for the Eagles back yeah, in the nineties. He was, and um, yeah, I love Deuce. He was a good mm-hmm. player, and let's see, like I said, both him and Mike Hyde at Michigan gonna get our running games popping mm-hmm. for the Lions and Wolverines. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I really, uh, I'm liking those those um, those hires. I think for me, it has to be um, Aubrey Pleasant, and you have to look at Aaron Glenn. We had a terrible secondary last year, and we have some young guys. Uh, Jalen Ramsey spoke highly of uh, Arby Pleasant out there in L.A. He said he had his best career uh, year under Pleasant. You know, he really learned how more how uh, you know, lot, excuse me, relying more on uh, his game, uh, where he just wasn't out there uh, just relying on his his natural ability. He it really learned about playing the defensive back role, playing the cornerback, and he learned a lot from being under the tutelage of. Arby Pleasant, and mix that with Aaron Glenn, who's a secondary, who's the secondary coach in uh, New Orleans. And you know, you look at some of the young talent we have uh, down there in the uh, in our secondary. Looking at 
uh, the third overall pick, Jeff Okuda. And you're looking at Amani Aroria, who had a really good season last year. You're going to have some some toolage for those young guys to help grow in that secondary. And we definitely need it. Um, that secondary was bad, and we need some toolage back there. And you thought you would have got it from Corey Unlin, but apparently that did not work out as well as we thought it was going to do to, um, for him coming over, being a, a former secondary coach himself. But I'm excited about those guys. Um, you really look at the, like you said, you have an all-star cast. You got guys that are turning down positions, other places, uh, to come to Detroit. Uh, Deuce Daly, Aaron Glenn uh, were uh, turned down some other jobs, especially for the Bears. And then we actually got one of the Bears coaching staff members in DeLeon. I mean, he helped turn around Roquan Smith. So looking at that, how do you feel about the three guys really coming over from the Bears, kind of like really choosing the Lions over the Bears? I love it. I love it. Excuse me. We can stick it to our division right like the Bears. Mm-hmm. I order packages of the Vikings. I love it. <laughs> but um excuse me, like I said, we um are putting together an all star front office and and um coaching staff. Can we get some players to come match? Especially yeah. who's gonna be our quarterback in twenty twenty one. We'll get to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I definitely think they're putting together a uh, a coaching staff and a front office staff that's going to make it the Lions an attractive place for free agents to come. Oh, that'd be great. Theor- that's how theoretically it works, but mm-hmm. the sort of players who come in and buy into what the Lions are doing is got anything got to be better than Patricia. And- <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yeah, and I like the um, and let- let's talk about that for one quick second. Let's talk about how the Lions went about it. You know, they had a really extensive uh, search. They really did their due diligence. Um, They didn't. If you look at how the Lions hired Dan Quinn, I mean, excuse me, Bob Quinn, and then hired um, uh, Matt Patricia, they just kind of went through the motions. I mean, they only, I think they only interviewed like two or three guys um, before they hired uh, Bob Quinn. And then like really Bob Quinn just went through the motions of really, you know, yeah, we, they brought a couple of guys in the interview after they fired Jim Caldwell, but he already knew he wanted to hire Matt Patricia. So he just kind of went through the motions and brought Matt Patricia in. Exactly. Yeah. So Yeah, that was a boy from New England. So yeah. he, he, he hired his homie with that one. And uh, you see that, you know, these guys got right to work, you know, got in the building um, and got to going. So let's kind of just close this out, you know. Um, I like the way that they really went about that. Um, and we're going to get our final thoughts about the, uh, the coaching staff. We're going to get Shawnee Jay's opinion here in a second, but again, let's thank you everyone for tuning in to the Die Hard Dan podcast presented by Detroit Lions on the Prowl on the belly up sports podcast network. Really? We appreciate you watching. Thank you for checking us out. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, like the video, share the video, comment, Hey, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. And if you aren't a member of our Facebook page already, go over there and check us out. My man, Shawnee J, puts it down on our Facebook page, keeping you informed of all the Lions, uh, the Detroit Lions news and rumors over there on our Facebook page. Shawnee J, big shout out to you for doing that. And if you're listening, you. <laughs> you're listening to us on one of the uh, podcast platforms, we really appreciate your download. Thank you for checking this out. Okay, so your let's get your your thoughts on the coaching staff as a whole because Shawnee J was out last week. So give me your impressions of what you think about Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. Well, they're they're both new to their jobs. Like I said once again, here we go again. Another brand, a guy with no experience in the front office, and another first coach with no head coach experience. Mm-hmm. We've been doing this before, of course, Matt Millen and Murray Morinway, and, of course, again, with Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think this time it's different. This is third chance of charm because um, at home was the one. Mm-hmm. Even though he wasn't a GM, he still had a lot to do out there in L.A. building the franchise. He has a good eye for talent, college talent. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons, even though he's the boss, he's the man, they, they just – didn't give him the keys alone. That's why they brought some other guys in, like mm-hmm. like um, 
Dorsey and Agnew and some other guys. Mm -hmm. So he, I think Sheila learned her lesson from the past. Okay, she likes the young upcoming homes, but she wanted to give them some help and give them every opportunity to succeed. Mm -hmm. So I'm pulling for the young man, you know, mm -hmm. Brad Holmes, to succeed. Yes. As far as Campbell goes, Mm -hmm. Former Lion, you know, he played his last three seasons with the Lions, even though the mm -hmm. last two he went into reserve. Um, mm -hmm. Fiery could tell he's still a fiery type of guy. Like I said this in the group. Mm -hmm. He reminds me of Bill Coward, a former Steelers coach. <laughs> he's in most of and got that same kind of fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, he th well, he lacks an X's O. Mm -hmm. He's a great motivator. He knows how to get the guys ready, like prepared mm -hmm. and ready for a game. And he let mm -hmm. his coordinators mm -hmm. worry about that. Oh, so he let um um Anthony Lynn, the office mm -hmm. coordinator, and Aaron Glenn mm -hmm. worry about that. Knows, and he'll be just be an administrator. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has the final say, yes or no. He gets he'll get the guys fired up. Mm -hmm. So once again, the Lions have put together an all star team in the front office and the coaching staff. But now let's get some all star players on the field. Definitely, definitely, I I agree with you wholeheartedly, one hundred percent. Getting the right players on the field is going to be a key to Dan Campbell's success uh, with Brad Holmes. Speaking of that, so let's take a look at Shawnee J. Give me your uh, picks to kind of take over for Matthew Stafford. Who do you want to come in uh, to suit up and get behind center to take over the Lions uh, quarterback position? Well, there's a lot of names out there. You, if you follow me in the group, mm -hmm. I put out a lot of names, and Lions fans mostly moan. Oh, this is how <laughs> it is. You want to get rid of Stafford? Yeah. Um, you know, because the best quarterback in franchise history, you you appreciate him. Now he's leaving, mm -hmm. so now that's what you get. Um, I tell you, one guy I want, I don't want. The mm -hmm. college play, you know, Justin Fields, Ohio State quarterback. I think you know why. Mm -hmm. The Buckeye quarterback. Um, Curse is real. I mean, in the last 50 years, mm -hmm. their most successful quarterback out of Ohio State was the former Bear and Steeler, Mike Tomczak. Remember him? Mm -hmm. He met for 15 years, mainly as a backup and spot starter. Mm -hmm. Won a ring with 85 Bears as a rookie, but and he backed up the often injured Jim McMahon and mm -hmm. split time with Jim Harbaugh. Um, but he has a, you know, he's their most successful quarterback at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's been bust after bust after bust. Yes, very so, much so. That's why, I, okay, it's proved me wrong, but the Ohio State Buckeye quarterback curse is real. And I don't want, you know, people said they want um, Fields or Wilson or or um, the guy from North Dakota State. Trey Lance. Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. I'm not ready to hand the keys over to a rookie just yet. Okay. There's a lot of veterans out there. Okay. Now, like I said, you're going to be my mole and some of these things too. Uh -huh. But like Cam Newton, well, uh -huh. or of course, they say go after Dak Prescott and Jameis Winston or Marcus Mariota. Uh -huh. um, like I said, these gang, a lot of these names aren't flowing your boat. Uh -huh. But hey, like I said, when you want to get Stafford, it's what you get. That's so, very true. Now, I think. Go ahead. I think this is sign maybe. Sign, pick two veteran quarterbacks like mm -hmm. Ham and Jameis. Okay, bring them in. Okay, compete. The only thing really with the James, I don't think he's going to get out of uh, New Orleans. New Orleans is, is looking at having him uh, really replace uh, Drew Brees down there because it looks like all things are pointing to Drew Brees hanging him up this year, and they are looking like they're going to uh, have that dual headed monster of Winston and uh, Taysom Hill. Just kind of how they use. Uh, Taysom Hill and and Drew Brees together. So I think looking at that, um, there is you know there's a couple of players. Dak Prescott maybe one of those guys. Uh, think about uh, they franchise tagged him and is going to go up this year if they can't get a deal with him. And Jerry Jones has n not <laughs> made it a secret that he likes Matthew Stafford. So that's one of the teams looking back at what we talked about. We really didn't listen uh, list them, but the Cowboys could be one of the teams that may be in the running to get Matthew Stafford. Jerry Jones like right. like Stafford. He likes that hometown kid. You know, we know Dallas Stafford. Area, yeah. He grew up in Holland Park, right out of the Dallas area. So he does like him. Uh, there is a, a few options out there. Uh, like we talked about Prescott being one of them, which could be a, um, a option. I will say this about Prescott. I was not impressed with Prescott at Mississippi State, but 
he grew on me at the Cowboys. As much as I have disdain for the Cowboys, I have to give Prescott his respect. He put up some good numbers out there in Dallas. Um, but the thing about Prescott, he's come off a severe injury, too. That so is that very true. Me. It's very yes. true. And the Lions are really good for that. I mean, they always bringing players in. Hopefully we can break that curse of <laughs> bringing in injured players. Look at some of the free agents we brought into the team uh, that were just coming off injury. I mean, this in recent years, True Font coming off injury, uh, Trey Flowers coming off injury. So you, we brought in these big names, even some of the guys we drafted. Look at Julian O'Quarter coming off an injury. So mm-hmm. we were just bringing in all these players that are broke up. We want some healthy guys that can that can go. You know yeah. what's the, what's that old saying? The best uh, ability is availability. So we need yeah. to get, bring some guys in who can play and start from day one. I mean. And then just the guy who actually has some good moments this year who barely ever saw the field before this year, Austin Bryant. I mean, look how long he sat on the shelf in Detroit before he can get on the field. Exactly. Yeah, I like him. He has talented. Same thing with Deshaun Hand. Mm-hmm. Those are talented guys, but they can't stay on the field. You always getting hurt. They can't stay on the field. And that, that definitely hurts us, uh, definitely. So it's a new day in Detroit. Uh, I think things are going to be looking up. I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the future. I'm not very optimistic that the first year is going to be great, but I think think some big things are going to happen. We're going to see how uh, how aggressive. Now, that's one thing that Brad Holmes is known for. You know, he helped out there in L.A. Think about this. Think about some of the draft picks that he helped bring in and a lot of the – time they didn't have a first round pick you know the last time they had a first round pick was jared golf that's the last that's the last first round pick and think look at the team that the rams have built out there i mean through through some draft picks you know some good you know second third round guys to help build that squad and then some of the free agents that they brought out there you know they were never afraid to draft to uh to trade draft picks for players you know, you know, Jerry Goff is kind of losing favor out in L.A. You think mm-hmm. anyone might do a swap staffer for Goff and some other picks in the The only problem with that is that the he's kind of like Deshaun Watson. He just signed that deal, too. So he's going to be a huge cap hit uh, for L.A. to move him, and it's going to be a big contract for the Lions to pick up. So, I mean, we're just kind of getting out of – I mean, we'll – I mean, trading – Training Stafford for picks and, you know, maybe signing a veteran may be the right thing to do just because of the fact it's going to save the Lions some money at the cap space. I just don't see uh, the Rams kind of being able to move on from him looking at their cap situation. I mean, this it's just going to be one of those things. They're going to be uh, probably looking to hold on to him. He may just be losing favor. He may need another year before they can move him. He just signed that deal. Because the end of this year, he hadn't even played on the new contract yet. So that money is going to be tied up in, in, with call, with, excuse me, with Jared Goff next season. Yeah. Do you want the Lions to draft a rookie quarterback like Wilson or Lance? Or, uh, yeah, I, for me, I would the, the quarterback I would take uh, for the Lions, I would take Trey Lance. I, just, I like his build. I like the way he plays. Um, and he's a dual threat. I don't, I don't think the Lions are going to have a chance to get Trevor Lawrence, so that's not going to be a possibility. I mean, unless we really we really have to mortgage the farm to get Trey Lance. Trey Stafford Jacksonville for the first pick. Yeah, I mean, that's that would have – I mean, you would have to trade Matthew Stafford and another first-rounder to get tra- to get Trevor Lawrence to, to get that first overall pick. It just ain't going to happen. So, um, it's just one of the things – it just ain't going to happen, right? I mean, so – Looking at the other guys, um, and I have that same kind of feeling about the Ohio State quarterbacks as I do the Alabama quarterbacks. I'm not really sold on uh, Mac Jones. I mean, he know he just won a national championship, but look at the Alabama quarterbacks that's played in the league over the last few years. You haven't had a successful one in a very long time. Um, I mean, really, the only, to me, in my only good memory, the only quarterback out of Alabama that has sustained success in the pros goes way back to Broadway Joe. Yep, and don't forget about the snake, Ken Stabler. Kenny Stabler, yeah. 
Bart Starr. But other than that, remember those guys? I mean, other than those guys, when the last time you had a really big name quarterback come out of Alabama? Yeah, well, Lions fans won the draft one last year for bad hip. I'm glad I'm, you know, so yeah. I, I was never sure. I was never sold on Tua. Um, I was just never sold on that guy. Um, and you look at people say, "Well, look at Jalen Hurts." Well, Jalen Hurts actually went to a different system out there in Oklahoma, so. I really consider him an Oklahoma quarterback and not a Alabama quarterback. So that's just right. where, I, where I kind of look at it from that standpoint. So, um, but I do like the young fella out of North Dakota State. I like Trey Lance. I'm not really sold on Zach Wilson as well, kind of undersized uh, quarterback. And I'm just kind of hearing some negative things about his personality out there at BYU. So I'm not really sold on him as well. Where the upside of the young fella out of North Dakota State, where he's he's a good in the community. He does a lot of community service, and he actually is a good athlete. He has some good size to him, and he's a dual threat. So, and if you look at the NFL, the way it's going, you know, more and more teams, are, you know, having a dual threat quarterback. And people say, well, Patrick Mahomes is yes, Patrick Mahomes is a dual threat. He can run. You you know, he just doesn't have to because of the weapons he has on the outside. Yeah. So Trey Lance, you know, he's a He's a risk because he only played one full season in college. He set out 2020 because of the COVID, you know. Well, yeah. So no. he's really, uh, no, he's a wild card. But that, that whole know. team kind of set out. Don't that whole that whole uh, um, really that whole <laughs> conference set out. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he, that whole conference was like, yeah, we shut it down. They only played what the, the bowl. They played a few games at the beginning of the season, and they played the bowl game, and that was kind of it. So um, yeah, the kind of championship. So. Um, I mean, I get what you're saying. I mean, but you know, you you're gonna have some. I mean, due to COVID, you're gonna have a risk any anywhere you go, who you draft. I mean, really is gonna be outside of the really top three, uh, as far as the getting that quarterback you're gonna want. Um, a lot of people are gonna say Trey, uh, Trevor Lawrence is, is you know, Justin Fields. I'm not really sold on. Uh, like I said, Zach Wilson. I'm not really sold on. So, I mean, if you draft a young player, I mean, you probably can, you know, you probably can trade back, you know what I'm saying, and get maybe a, a, a Trey Lance because not a lot of teams are going to be in the market for him. But I think he's going to be a good player in the NFL. I think he has a lot of upside intangibles. And if you bring in a veteran quarterback for him to sit behind, then you can you can definitely uh, have, the, have the quarterback of the future, you know what I'm saying, sit under a good veteran quarterback. And that was one of my points of, Really, I think even if Stafford would have stayed, I would have wanted to draft a quarterback just to kind of like sit behind Stafford for a couple of years. Do you think um, David Blau has any future with the Lions? He may. I'm not sure. You know, he, I would say this about Mr. Blau. Um, he had some uh, bright spots, but he had more negative than positive. But he he did have a good, you know, good a couple of plays while he was in there in relief of Stafford uh, the year before last. So uh, I wouldn't put anything past him, but I think he's going to be one of those guys who's going to be a journeyman backup for the rest of his career. Yeah. He, yeah. he asked him, can he be the next Drew Brees? Same college, same size about, you know. Yeah. But yeah, the but Drew Brees is a generational player. You know what I'm saying? You know, you don't run. You don't run across a Drew Brees or like a Russell Wilson. You know you don't run across those guys very often in the NFL. You know with that the smaller type of quarterbacks. You know like a Kyler Murray. You know we'll see how long he lasts. You know with his game, but you know. But if you look at all those guys, you know what I'm saying the, those short guys, except for Brees, all of those guys are kind of mobile as well. Right. Yeah. So, okay, that was two point conversion this week. It's time to get to the wrapping up the end of the show. So Shawnee J, what's your final thoughts for everyone out there this evening? Like yeah, it's been for the past several weeks. Mm -hmm. Be careful with this COVID this ain't no joke. It's increasing in her, increasing all over the country. It's another outbreak. Um so even some people die from taking the vaccine. So you just don't know. Just you know, take care of yourselves, stay clean, wash your hands, use your mask. Mm -hmm. Continue social distancing and be smart, people. Definitely be smart. Now, again, Shawnee J, we did miss you last week, my man. It's always good to have you on the show. 
And as always, you can check us out right here, uh, the Die Hard Dan podcast. You can check out our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. We really appreciate it. Um, definitely check us out. We are now presented by Detroit Lions on the Prow on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network. We appreciate it. Go over there and check out the content over there on the Belly Up Sports Podcast Network uh, page. It's www.bellyup.com. They have a ton of different podcasts over there. We're going to be doing some collaborations with some of those guys over there as well. So look out for that. Uh, They have tons of content. You have articles plus podcasts. So all your sports needs can be met right over there on the Belly Up. Uh, podcast network page and as always we really appreciate you tuning in to our show shawnee J. tell the people how they can find you on social media you can find me on facebook my full name is sean jennings mm-hmm. i'd be happy to ask you as a friend or ask you to our detroit truth fans group and our die hard Gen page is a public page just you know look i keep both pages updated very well keep you all to know yes definitely Definitely. You can find me on social media at Curtis Steele 14 on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow the page uh, on Twitter at DieHardDanPodC1. You can follow us over there on Instagram at Die underscore Hard underscore Dan underscore Podcast. Our YouTube channel is the Die Hard Dan Podcast as well as our Facebook page, you know, Facebook.com slash Die Hard Dan podcast we really appreciate you tuning in to the show this evening that's what we recorded on thursday nights so you know what you guys to do for your man kirsten and shawnee J. whatever you do in life you got to boss up ball out and be the best version of you that you can be for my man shawnee J. this is kurt Steele, and we are 